Well, hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining the Andesite Blue webinar on how you can earn passive income by doing something really fantastic by helping to rebuild Ukraine. In this presentation, I'm going to tell you about the opportunity. I'm going to tell you about how it works. I'm going to tell you the why. I'm going to go through all of that. But before I do the presentation, I am required, I need to give a disclaimer. So I'm gonna do that very quickly and then we'll move on to the actual fun part of the presentation where you can see all the good things that can come as a result of working with Andesite Blue. So um, as accredited investors, you will be aware that all investments carry some level of risk. This investment is only available to investors who are able to assess their own appetite for risk. Please read the risk statement within the investment memorandum before investing. Fantastic. Okay, now we can do it. Now we can do it. Let's let's go to the slides here. So, how does this work? We are going to help with rebuilding Ukraine. And we can offer passive income that ranges from 7.15% to as high as 8.85% with a bond. We offer a corporate income bond. This is not a government bond. It's a corporate income bond of a UK company. We're a UK company called Andesite Blue registered at Companies House. And when you purchase this bond, you can select, do you want to do a three-year, five-year term? And then you can earn 7.15 to 8.85. Now we'll go through uh, the, uh, the the thing is it's uh, it's something where once again you're not buying a bond in the government of Ukraine. You're buying a, a corporate income bond of a company, a privately held company called Andesite Blue. Let's go through the team. We have such a great team here to work for you. And we are excited about it. Our team has over 250 years of business experience operating in more than 20 countries and including numerous emerging and developing markets. Our team members have managed banks, billions of dollars in projects worldwide, along with currently representing one of the largest international investment firms in the United States and other public and government institutions throughout their illustrious careers. So let's start with Nigel Brigden. All of this information is on the website. You can get more information on their profiles. I'm just going to quickly mention a few highlights of each team member. So Nigel Brigden is our chairman of the board. He is a UK citizen. He is a highly qualified and experienced banker, and he has 40 years worth of experience in banking. He has excellent contacts throughout the city of London. Uh, he has been an, a banking expert. Uh, he's been involved with domestic and international payments, um, all sorts of tremendous experience that he that he brings to the team. We have Christina Katrakis. She is a highly qualified and experienced political coordinator. Uh, she has been involved with a number of multi-million dollar projects uh, worldwide. Um, she's someone that has such experience and connections, and, and we're really lucky to have her as a team member. We have Tetiana Kiltika. She is our corporate secretary, but she's also a businesswoman, and I'll, I'll mention a few things about her. Uh, she has experience with project management, budget management, sales forecasting, and team leadership. She actually founded a UK company focused on the recruitment of Ukrainians, uh, work opportunities. She has done so many good things, and uh, we're, we're very pleased to have her as a team member. Stephen Dyball, he's our senior operations manager. Uh, he brings a lifetime of experience working in emerging markets. Uh, his four decades of experience, you know, they, they range everywhere from being a chemist to actually a regional operations manager. And we'll talk more about him in another slide. Mike Wilson is uh, a co-founder. He is uh, 
an American businessman. He um, has worked at a lot of companies, uh, including Panasonic, Brother, and AT&T. And uh, he adds a lot of experience to the team. Myself, I am uh, a businessman from America, uh, and uh, I've been involved in real estate heavily in America, purchasing residential and commercial properties in America, but not just the United States. I also have been involved in private business acquisitions in the U.S. and Europe. So I'm, I, and I do a lot of work with startup businesses. So I bring that experience to the team. Vasil Milnick, and I want to draw your attention to Vasil Milnick. Um, he is actually super, super experienced, experienced in, Ukraine. in Ukraine. He was, he was a, a director in the Ministry of Finance in Ukraine. So he, he brings tremendous experience. He was elected from the Vitaly Klitschko bloc and uh, his professional experience and knowledge of political processes in Ukraine is extensive and invaluable. We're very pleased to have him. Anatoly Landman is a Ukrainian citizen. He's a, He also is a businessman. If you've ever been to Kiev, Ukraine, and you've been to the metro there, uh, when the internet was first put in in that metro, he was actually involved in that entire project, putting it together, planning it out, getting people to install it. He handled he handled it. Dr. Mark Hong is a, our chief medical officer. He has an extensive background in the medical field as an oral surgeon. Uh, he was born in South Korea, and he came to the U.S., and uh, he graduated from NYU. Uh, he has worked in the U.K. and the U.S. as a dentist, uh, brings a lot of experience, and he's part of the team because in addition to reconstruction, we're also interested in the healthcare market, uh, trying to help uh, there as well. Andrew Richings, he is a consultant with Andesite Blue. He's the founder of Thomas Kelly Holdings. It's a boutique private consultancy firm uh, focused on private equity, fixed income bonds for ultra high net worth and high net worth sophisticated investors. So he brings a lot to the team and he helps us with everything. So very good. Now let's talk about the opportunity. So with the twinning reconstruction initiative, uh, the this is an initiative that was set by the government of Ukraine because so much damage had been done in different regions of Ukraine that basically countries paired or twinned with a region of Ukraine. The United Kingdom is twinned with the capital, Kiev. Sweden is twinned with Mykolaiv. Estonia is twinned with Zhitomer, and then the Republic of Ireland is twinned with the Rivni Oblast. But President Zelensky, he said that when each of the partner countries or partner cities or partner companies will have the opportunity, they'll be able to take patronage mm -hmm. over a particular region in Ukraine. So it's, it's a fantastic program. You know, and this is something where uh, Ukraine still has a lot of advantages that make it an attractive investment destination. The, Ukraine's financial system has demonstrated resilience and readiness for such a challenge as Russia's armed aggression, such a cruel war, so cruel. Um, assistance from international financial organizations, as well as European integration processes, they're really gonna foster investment attractiveness uh, of Ukraine to a new level, but there's such a need for reconstruction. And that's one thing that we're gonna be very active in is reconstruction. We're gonna invest in other areas, but reconstruction is gonna be a key area that we are going to focus on. So now um, here's an example. This is actually Bucha. This is in Ukraine, Bucha. This is where so many of the war crimes occurred in city Bucha, which is very close to Kiev. And this is how it looked, how it looked on the on day that the, day the, city, that the city, city was taken, was taken back. back. You could see the destroyed tank. I'll, you know, you could see how much damage there was. But now, 
tremendous improvement in terms of people, the local people. They've they've made a tremendous improvement here with restoring anything, but there's still so much work that remains. The government lacks uh, funding. Of course, there's foreign donations. There's always donations, and and virtually every member of Andesite Blue has personally donated money to help with reconstruction and to help people in Ukraine. But a charity can only go so far because uh, people need to get their money back. They can't just give it away forever. You know, to do this on a larger scale, we need a solution. We need a financial instrument that lets us on a much larger scale rather than just, oh, here's a charity. Let me invest a little bit of money in a charity. That feels great. And that is great. But what is also very important is to offer a competitive financial product that ticks all of the boxes where people can say, you know what, I can earn more money on this andesite blue bond. I can know that I'm doing something good with the money and that it's being managed by a team of professionals. So that is why it is so important to, uh, to have this uh, financial product. And it's something where we're going to be able to do so much to help. I mean, you look at the terrible destruction. The, the, this is unbelievable, this level of cruelty. You know, these are civilian homes that have been uh, destroyed. And there's there's absolutely no reason for it. It's 100% inexcusable, this type of uh, behavior. And it is something where it happened. It should have never happened. But now that it's happened, we've got to rebuild things. We've got to make things better. We've got to do what we can to help these people. And we also need to do it in a business-like manner where instead of just getting on the phone, calling for donations, we create a way where we can borrow the money use the money to fix things up, make it better, get the money back. Everybody wins. The investors win because they get passive income. The, the people win because they get reconstruction. Everybody wins. It's a great, great opportunity. I have sort of a long history in the manufacturing industry. This is so interesting. We've got here a, uh, we have a clip here with Steve Dyball. He's our senior operations manager. I'm going to play this real short clip here, just a minute. In the manufacturing industry, uh, engineering, chemistry, uh, either running chemical manufacturing plants or building them. Um, so in the early days of my life, I was very much in the man pure manufacturing, but building, building plants, building plants constantly. And so as life went on, um, I seemed to have a switch from being just involved in the manufacturing to actually being involved with the design mm -hmm. and the building. Um, life has taken me around the world uh, somewhat. I left, I'm from the UK, uh, but uh, left and uh, moved to Australia. Um, there, again, building plants, but not only building plants, we had a lot of plants that needed to uh, be improved, their efficiencies were poor, and uh, this was when we really started to get in. Uh, after that, eventually, I ended up, for the last 30 years, sat in uh, Dubai, but working in all the emerging countries. Africa, all of Africa, uh, a good deal of it um, into uh, India, Pakistan, Turkey, uh, Kazakhstan, even down into Brazil. Um, okay. So very much my last 30 years has been building facilities in the emerging markets. Emerging markets. You said yeah. you were in some emerging. How, approximately, how many emerging markets did you actually work in in uh, developing well, and supplying plants? Well, I mean, I know. Well, in the last eight, in the last twenty-five years, thirty years, approximately twenty-two countries. Twenty-two countries. Yes. Okay, and that included Russia, didn't it? It includes Russia. Yeah, Ukraine. Here, we looked at some projects. Kazakhstan, a lot of work. Uh, but uh, in, in Africa, Algeria, Morocco, mm -hmm. Egypt, Kenya, Nigeria, South Africa. 
So that's a bit of a background. Now let's talk about a project. I'm gonna show the first project. This is an actual reconstruction project. And we're gonna hear from a company called Ukraine Nua. This is a company that it, we are going to be working with. Uh, they're also active in the reconstruction of Ukraine. You're gonna see a short clip of an interview uh, with Mike Wilson, who's a team member. Uh, of andesite blue and uh you're going to see Svetlana can, here uh, provide uh, humanitarian help yes. to ukraine it is very big help to us especially now mm -hmm. when many people without roof mm -hmm. uh, they are uh, refugees in other countries sorry i can't speak i i will cry no oh, sorry okay so nothing well i'll get into that in more details later but the um there, like you said, the services, the lawyer services, and the mm -hmm. accounting services. They're also you're you're also looking to um, produce job opportunities for Ukrainians when they come back. So because they, they've lost a lot of their jobs, they're not working. There's a lot of companies that have been closed down, and so people are without income. And so we're not just looking to build houses. Uh, you're also looking to uh, produce uh, uh, communities and environments where people will have work to uh, be provided. Um, and sources of income and things to rebuild and get their lives back. Uh, yes, and uh, who will who will build it? It will build Ukrainian people. Yes, uh, they they will have their job and they will have their salaries for uh, life. Yes. To continue their happy life in Ukraine, in new community. It will be modern community mm -hmm. with lastest uh, technologies and. Uh, Everything we are working very hard with uh, green energy mm -hmm. in yeah. our communities, and it will be very high quality communities. We are uh, our our dream to build uh, communities of future. It must work not one, two years, uh, ten years, or twenty. We are uh, looking for about one hundred years. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you want it to be sustainable, sustainable, sustainable and you know, sustainable so yeah. modular mm -hmm. communities. Yeah. Yes, it will be very strong, very, um, very modernization with lastest technologies. The other uh, thing, and you touched on it just a little bit now, which is exciting, is that it is Ukrainians' jobs. It's actually not just the uh, fabrication of the homes, on the prefabrication of the homes and the modulars, because that will be done in a factory. And that so we'll have Ukrainian uh, factory workers will have employment through that, but you're also creating jobs on the in the inside those communities, and we're creating businesses inside those communities. So that it's and it's all Ukrainian. So we're actually producing the economy that uh, this is sustainable. Uh, yes, and uh, now we are. Uh, uh, modular uh, modular. Um, uh, manufacture, mm -hmm. uh, man, manufacture, 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 home, uh, home, uh, homes company uh, speaking with us now. Uh, they would like to se set up uh, their manufacturing uh, uh, fa Ukraine. facility mm -hmm. in Ukraine in Rivne. Okay. Uh, it will be also, it will be very big uh, interest industry. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be easier to get materials materials and for building uh, this modular uh, communities and also there will be also jobs for our ukrainian yes, people yes so let me take a little moment here and i want to explain to the audience real quick uh, um what we're talking about and how this works the the it's a uh, building of homes okay that sounds like there's just just construction construction workers and men working their hands well in the in a, in a pre-manufactured pre homes and the modular homes you do have a, a plant, a factory that uh, has all of the material and everything ready to start putting these homes together. Now, it's not cookie cutters. These are actual, they're better quality. They have better uh, efficiencies. They have better insulations. They retain heat better in the winter and they retain the coolness in the summer. Uh, so they're very strong and durable homes. And what's really great about it is, is that because it's in a factory, you can easily monitor the uh, quality control, which is very important because now you have quality control management that actually looks at each of the processes. So one 
one person, he will have, he will be in charge of one little area of, of his job of a certain part of the construction. And then each person has their own field. Will they get better and better at it and more efficient? All the tools, all the, the nails, the screws, the, the wood, the uh, plastics and material, everything necessary, the insulation is all there. And it goes down like building a car. It goes down a, a assembly line and builds it together. And then these homes are put together uh so that uh you know they will then be shipped by truck on location and then so the, now the other part of the work will be the prepare, preparation of the foundations whether it's a single dwelling home single family dwelling home or whether it's a multifamily and such as a high-rise apartments so these can be done in either way the other really nice thing about these uh homes is a design they're not just boxes Okay, they have a very good aesthetic look, exterior and interior. The interior is amazing. The neat thing about it is, is that you can actually pick and choose your what you want on the interior. So if you for and this is how we did it in America, that we would go and say, oh, we like this home, we like this design, we like the, the uh, footprint and everything that uh, and the plan and the, and the structure of the plan. But we get to pick the, the faucets. We get to pick the uh, appliances. We get to pick what we want to, and how it looks, the carpet or, you know, flooring or however. So you can actually customize your own home even before it is uh, made. And then... Uh, yeah, it's, it's really exciting, actually, to, to, to see that. We'll be able to make such a positive impact there. Uh, you know, there's a lot of companies that are in Ukraine before the war, and there's going to be even more companies coming into Ukraine. If you look at some of these brands, you will doubtly, doubtless recognize some of them. Uh, Ukraine has been such an attractive place for investment, and it's going to come back even stronger. It's going to come back even stronger as, you know, as it is rebuilt. Um, let's talk about the actual financial product. Let's talk about the bond. Uh, what are some of the advantages and features of the bond? Well, the first advantage is that you can reach your passive income goals far more quickly. We can uh, we can provide passive income to you uh, from the day that you purchase the bond. It is so fast. We as soon as you purchase the bond, you're earning passive income. Uh, we offer an annual investment program that allows you to reach the passive income levels you desire. So for example, if you're a professional and you've got maybe five years till retirement, you're in a situation where you're thinking, you know, you at some point you need to supplement your retirement. This can be great for that because each year you can make an investment and you can build what's called a bond ladder where you just add up more and more passive income. Or if you're starting with a large capital base now, you can just calculate how much passive income. Do you want 5,000 pounds a month? Do you want 10,000 pounds? Do you want 1,000 pounds? Do you want 100,000 pounds? We can we can work with any of those scenarios to, to work out a plan to get you to that passive income. And uh, it's it's very, very easy process, very fast. We've designed it. We've streamlined it for you. Another nice thing about working with Andesite Blue is you get maximum diversification. We all know as investors the importance of diversification, that it is so, so important. When you invest with Andesite Blue, you are investing, helping to reconstruct uh, Ukraine. Uh, we're going to use the funds in industries like healthcare, housing, agriculture, green energy, all of these things in the emerging market of Ukraine. And Ukraine right now, the people need help. The country needs help. This is something that is fantastic, but you're getting maximum diversification. Another thing that is unique about Andesite Blue or is that we don't charge our investors any fees. Now, I'm sure you've talked to the hedge fund guys and the private equity guys, and they just love to tell you about the two and 20 and how their fees work and all of this. I am not giving those guys a hard time. I'm not saying they're not worth their fees. I'm just telling you that if you would prefer not to pay those fees, if you would prefer that the money goes to uh, projects, not actually paying fees like that, we have a very simple business where we're going to reconstruct. We're going to build. We're going to make things better. Whereas uh, those sorts of investments, you know, private equity, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but one third of those 
uh, lose money, a third of them break even, and then maybe the last third actually makes money. And in, and but you're paying fees 100, percent you know. So it's it's something to keep in mind. We have designed this as a no fee product. Uh, you get interest payment flexibility. We can work with you. We can make payments to you quarterly. We can make payments to you annually. Or if you want the maximum compounding, if you want to just really compound the money as much as possible, you can select on maturity. It just depends on what you want. We're happy to work with you. We can have a one-on-one -on -one discussion based on what your what kind of your goals are, and we can help you get there faster. Um, now I want to show something that is so important uh, because a lot of people, if they're looking at passive income, they are looking sometimes at UK gilts. And I want to demonstrate here more clearly the difference between a 30-year UK gilt and an andesite blue bond over time where you can kind of get a sense of uh, what we can do that a gilt can't do. So I'm going to just play this That's clip. The United Kingdom's 30-year gilt yield, and then compare that with andesite blue. And I'll give you a hint. Andesite blue uh, has uh, much higher yields. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and look at the long-term history here. We can see that the highest that uh, uh, yields were in the United Kingdom was around 16% back in 1981. And then the general trend is it has gone down. The yield has decreased in value over time on the UK gilt. So if we go uh, all the way to, uh, to uh, it looks like about May of 2020, it was even a little lower there. We can see that you know, you had some very low. Here's here's a yield that was as low as 0.52 back in April of 2020, and then it's it's gone up. But to put that into comparison, we are offering a, a yield that's around 7.15 to 8.85. So let's just call it eight, uh, approximately. The to get an eight yield, to get an eight percent yield, you would have to go back in time. To the, on a, if you compare it with a gilt, uh, you're looking at uh, uh, the last, it was around an 8% yield was around, uh, let's see, when was it here? It was a while ago to get an 8% yield. You were, you had, had to go all the way back a uh, long time to, to get that. It would have been uh, somewhere around the 90s. So it's something to keep in mind that with andesite blue, we are able to offer a return that's around 8%. And the UK gilt has not done that in many years. So just please keep that in mind uh, when you're trying to decide where, uh, between bonds that are gilts and andesite blue. Fantastic, fantastic. Now, um, the, the, the next thing is, let's talk about how the bond actually works for you. Well, you get passive income, and we offer these to high net worth individuals and institutions. The way it works is the net proceeds of the bond are used to invest in Ukraine with projects that have been reviewed and passed our due diligence. And we have a very extensive due diligence process uh, our local Ukrainian management company actually collects the rent and the payments and oversees the management of the loan portfolio. So it is designed to be as simple as possible for our bondholders where they can just get the passive income. What kind of investments? Well, healthcare, surgical clinics, dental clinics, real estate, agriculture we we're, we're doing and green energy that's another category we want to 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 have a a well diversified loan portfolio across uh industries let's take a look here at the returns and we're going to take the example of someone invests 100,000 pounds that is our suggested minimum investment but folks i want you to know that if you're Maybe you're just getting started with us. Maybe you want to start out something smaller than that. We will work with you. It's not a problem. I mean, 
you know, but but uh, this is something that uh, the option is there, and we suggest a hundred thousand pounds. But if you want to do something else, we'll we'll find a solution. We want to we want to work with you. Uh, the term of the bond repayment is, for example, thirty six months. That's our shortest term bond, and the interest rate that you earn ranges from seven point one five percent to as high as eight point one five percent. So that seven point one five percent is if you select quarterly payments. And then let's look at the second row. We'll look at if you were to purchase a 60-month bond, say you just wanted the maximum return, say you wanted to earn as much as possible, you could select the 60-month bond, uh, place 100000 and let's say that you selected the bullet payment or the payment on maturity. In that case, you would get 8.85%. And uh, so you would place 100,000 pounds, you would, throughout the five-year period, you would receive 55,659 pounds paid uh, at the term, at the end of it. And then you'd also get your 100,000 pounds back. But if you were to select the lowest paying bond, you would place 100,000 pounds. You'd select a three-year bond. Uh, you would get a 7.15% quarterly payment. Say you said, hey, I want to get paid quarterly. No problem. We're happy to do that. Uh, you would earn 100, you would earn 21,450 pounds in interest, and you would get your 100,000 pounds uh, back. So that's how it works. That is something that uh, is uh, a simple illustration. Let's go through some questions. People sometimes ask, why should I invest in the bond? Well, great question. The directors believe that an investment in this bond is suited to investors that are seeking an above average return on investment. If you're an investor that just wants an average return, you can always purchase a 30-year UK gilt. It has zero default risk and you've got a 30-year gilt, but you're talking about a 3.7% rate uh, yield on that if you, if you do that. Whereas we can offer significantly more. We can offer an above average return on investment to our investors. Also, if you would like a, a bond that is asset backed, we use what we call the gold standard when we do these investments. And the way that that works is we actually look at the asset that we're, or the project that we're funding, and then we make sure that it is a, a low loan to value. What that means is uh, we're not loaning at 100% of the loan to value. We're loaning at lower than that. We try to, we try to make it as, as secure and safe as possible. But the, uh, the other thing is if you're looking for passive income. Okay, how long is the bond? It ranges from 36 months to 60 months. And here is a very nice thing. A lot of investors, they already have enough capital and they want to keep it working. We can do that for you. We can automatically renew it on an annual basis. We give you plenty of notice. We give you multiple notices. Uh, if you don't want the money back, if you say, hey, you know, just renew it. I, I want to keep it working. We will keep it working for you on an annual basis. That way you're not getting the money back and then you have to go find another investment. This is something where for years we can put that money to work uh, and we can be paying you passive income. So that is a that's a convenience. But it's but you just let us know what you want. If you want it back at the end of the term, we'll get it right back to you. It's not a problem at all. We plan everything out carefully for that. Um, can I put the bond into my self-invested personal pension? Well, great question. The bonds are suitable for that, uh, but but it's subject to approval by the SIP provider. But here's what I would like you to know, folks. If you have a SIP provider and they don't understand what we're doing and they just kind of have a look in their eye like, well, we can't do that, call us. Please call us if your SIP provider says something like that. We know many other SIP providers that understand what we're doing and they can help you. And we're more than happy to, to, to recommend you to one. Uh, what type of investment? It's a corporate income bond. Uh, who can invest? Well, the first requirement is that you have to be over 18 years old. And let me tell you the good news, folks. Every Judging by everyone I'm seeing on, on camera here, I think everyone is over 18. I think everyone's over 18, so we all qualify. So that is some good news. Uh, 
a trust can invest, a company can invest, a charity can invest, come one, come all. We welcome everyone. Uh, you need to be a certified high net worth investor, but but we make that easy. You just sign that you're, you know, assuming it's accurate. I'm not telling you to sign something that's not accurate, but you sign that you're a certified investor, high net worth, that, you know, after you do the documents, it's very easy. Um, uh, you can invest through a company and yes, joint applications are permitted. How's the tax handled? We pay 100% of the interest to you. We don't take anything out for taxes. We, we send all of the money to you. All the interest goes to you. And then once you get the money, you can work out with your tax professional how much the tax should be. Everybody has a different marginal tax rate, and it's easier just to pay all the money uh, to our investors, our bondholders. Uh, are there any limits? No, there's no limits. We suggest a minimum of 100,000 pounds. We can work with smaller amounts, but there's no upper limit. If you're an institutional investor and you want to do a large placement, that is something that we can accommodate. In Ukraine, before the war, there were 75 billion in projects that needed funding before the war. Now, as a result of this terrible, cruel world war, we are talking about hundreds of billions, potentially up to a trillion in projects that need funding. So there is no shortage of opportunity. Um, can I get access to the money early? No, no, this is very important. This is not like day trading where you can just, oh, you know, I bought a stock. I'm gonna, oh, oh it went down. I'm gonna sell it. I'm gonna get my money back. You folks are smart, accredited investors. You understand that that's not how this works. This is a longer term investment. We plan it out so that at the end of the term, when your bond is maturing, that we can pay it out at that point. And that's why it's not, for example, a one-year bond or a one-year bond. It's just not enough time to, to get projects done safely. So, so this is something where uh, it's not possible to access your capital before the end of the investment term. So please plan for that. How will you receive your interest? It's paid directly into the bank account that you nominate. You just let us know what bank account. Uh, what do you do next? If you if you want to invest, you just fill out the contact form. Go to our website. Please fill out the contact form, and we can help you. Now, real quickly, I'm going to show you a few sample projects. Here is one. This is with the company Ukraine Nua Modular Communities. This is something that is for returning Ukrainian refugees. And the way that it works is this project has a cost of between three to five million pounds and uh, per phase. And it's something where these post-war and pre-EU rehoming strategy, these, these homes are going to be nice. They're going to be comfortable. It's something that we can provide. It is a very exciting project. The production of dairy products, uh, that is something that has a 7.6 million total uh, investment and uh, five years is the project timeline on that one. That's something that's important. A logistics center in Kiev, that's a project that we're looking at. It's 34 million, uh, but logistics centers are important. Now this is gonna sound maybe not so fancy. This is not some high tech thing that sounds exciting, but it is important. The construction of bricks, a brick factory, because in these sorts of reconstruction, bricks are so, so important because there's so much brick that is needed. So that is something that is a larger investment, 118 million, but it is one that is vital. Uh, another one of the investment that's important, but it may not be exciting, is ceramic blocks. Ceramic blocks are just so important. The modernization of bricks and ceramic blocks production, that's a $1.8 million project. Folks, this is uh, real exciting. We've got so much opportunity for you. We welcome you in as an investor, and we want to thank you for taking the time to, to listen to the presentation. You know, we value the opportunity to work with you. So I'm going to stop the recording now. And then I'm going to open it up to questions. You're welcome to ask any questions. I welcome that. But I'm going to stop the recording. So give me just a minute here.